Hello guys, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can convert the navigation drawer, which currently looks like this from our previous video, into something like what you see on the right hand side as per Android design support library using the Android navigation view. Before I start, there are two things that I would like to point out. One, if you go to Google and if you type SlideNerd Udemy on the Google search, you will find our Udemy profile where we are gonna post stuff on how to make apps for Android, iOS and other mobile platforms. Two, if you go to our channel Slide Nerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the material design videos in the material design series that we have built out here. So let's get started now. The first thing that I would like to do is remove this default action bar at the top and replace that with our own custom app bar or action bar or toolbar. Now this is added inside your styles.xml file here on the left hand side. If you open this file, you would notice that it says parent is theme.appcompat.light.darkactionbar. So here we can remove the part where it says dark action bar and instead we can say no action bar over here. Once you do this and if you run the app, you won't see an action bar anymore. On running the app, this is what you see in your main activity. You need to open the drawer and then you can see the items. But notice that there is no title, no dialog for settings, nothing out here. So let's go back and add our own custom action bar, which would be toolbar. To do that, I will jump into the activity underscore main.xml. So I currently have a frame layout here that represents the main content, which will be seen by the user at all times. I'm going to add my action bar inside this along with another layout that is going to represent other content, maybe a recycler view or a list view of that sort. So I'm going to change this frame layout for starters into a linear layout. And I'm going to make sure that the orientation for this linear layout is vertical in nature. Now I'm going to add my toolbar inside this by simply saying toolbar. But remember, this is going to add the toolbar that runs only on the latest devices. We need to make sure that the toolbar runs on all devices. To do that, I'm going to use the support version of the toolbar. So that is how the support version of the toolbar looks like. It's Android that support V7 widget toolbar. The width is match parent, the height is wrap content. But I will also supply a minimum height to obey the Android guidelines, which would be in the attribute ATTR, where I say action bar size over here. After giving this an ID of app underscore bar, I'm going to go back to the main activity and tell our app to use this toolbar as the support action bar. To do so, I'll go at the top here in the activities code and create an object of type toolbar. Now once again, remember very well, if you want to import this class, if you hit alt enter or option return, you get the option to import the class and there are two of them. Most people I have seen in the comments always import the first one and then they say the toolbar is not working. You're always supposed to use the second one if you want to make the toolbar work on all the devices. So select that and inside the onCreate method, let's initialize this, the standard find view by ID method way. So there's my toolbar fully initialized. Now I can simply say set support action bar and I can pass my toolbar object that I just created. On running the app, this is what you find currently. There is no button at the top that lets you open the drawer still, but at least we can see our title out there and you can see the items that have been placed inside. We'll have to manually set the color on the toolbar and this settings menu currently doesn't seem to work as well. So coming back to studio, I have set the background color for our toolbar as color primary. If you try running the app at this time, this is what you get. You see the toolbar with the color primary. However, this icon on the right hand side is barely visible because of its weird default color. Let's change that by going back and applying a theme on our toolbar. To do that, I can simply use the app theme and I can use one of the two values. So I use the value which is called theme overlay dot app compact dot action bar. Let's take a look at this value in action. So when I run the app, now I can see clearly that the title is in dark and this icon is also dark colored just the way we wanted. However, if I change the theme to theme dot overlay dot app compact dot dark dot action bar, it means keep the background of the action bar dark, but keep the text and other contents in white color. Let's take a look at this in the console right here. You take a look at the app, you see that now everything is in white color. So one of the two options are available if you guys intend to go for it. Now let's go back to code that is main activity and initialize our navigation view. To do that, I'll construct an object at the top of navigation view. So once my drawer has been fully initialized, as you see in this method here, next step is to make an object of a class called action bar drawer toggle. Let's take a look at this class and figure out why we need it. It turns out that there are two classes with the same name. 
the transaction bar drawer toggle here and in a separate tab i have something different take a look at this it says it is from the package v7.app.actionbar drawer toggle here it says this class is deprecated use the one from v7 app compat make sure that when you're creating an object you're taking the one on the left and not the one on the right now this class is needed to show the hamburger icon on the top left and make that icon work the hamburger icon looks something like this when you click on it the drawer opens and when you click on it again the drawer closes so let's go back and build this in code so here i'm going to try and create an object of action bar drawer toggle inside the on create look at the five parameters it needs in fact there are two variations of this constructor and we are going to use the one that is below so the first thing it requires is an activity since our class main activity is the one we can just say this over here the second parameter it needs would be a drawer layout now we currently don't have a drawer layout initialized in our main activity but we need to do that let's go at the top and make a drawer layout over here so in activity underscore main.xml i give an id to our drawer layout which is called drawer underscore layout going back to main activity i can refer to that in my code here inside the on create where i can say m drawer layout is find view by id and pass that id over there so once i have my object of drawer layout i can pass that object over here which would be m drawer layout the third parameter that we require would be the nullable toolbar we can pass an object of our toolbar here by simply passing it there the fourth is going to be the text that should be shown as part of content description when the drawer is open we can simply say r dot string dot drawer underscore open don't worry i haven't created it i will create it right now let's put each of these parameters in one line after adding the missing pieces this is what i have for the object of the action bar drawer toggle let's create these two strings by hitting option return or alt enter on your keyboard just create a string value let's do that we'll give the value as open here the same way we will make the close one where we give a value of close and we click ok over here the next step would be to link the drawer layout and the drawer toggle the drawer toggle as the name suggests simply is going to keep track of who is active on the screen whether it's the drawer or whether it's the main content so we can simply say m drawer layout drawer listener and here we can pass the drawer toggle that we just created drawer toggle basically extends drawer listener in one way if you see the documentation of that class in the next step i have converted my drawer toggle variable from a local variable to an instance variable that is defined at the top i need to call a method here called sync state let's go there and do that when i say m drawer toggle dot sync state if you're not sure what this method does i have already covered this in my other videos on navigation drawer if you still have doubts you can go to google and type action bar drawer toggle space sync state and you would get a lot of results from stack overflow that tell you what this method exactly does so going down let's add the on configuration change method which again as per documentation of the action bar drawer toggle you need to call it take a look at this statement where they say that you need to handle this case where on configuration change needs to be triggered so let's go and do that in android studio i'm going to add my method here called on configuration changed and i'm going to simply say m drawer toggle dot on configuration changed and pass the new config object now this is one of the reasons why i made the drawer toggle variable into an instance variable so that i can access it from this method on running the app this is what you see we have our hamburger icon here when you click on that the drawer opens and when you can shut it down it is back to where it was and this was possible because of the action bar drawer toggle you simply told it that look this is my activity this is my toolbar and i am using a drawer layout now take these three objects and put them together so that when i click on the icon the drawer should open and when i click on it again or i swipe back it should close so let's take a look at how we can add a header inside this and make this even more fancy adding a header to the navigation view is pretty simple and straightforward all you have to do is use this tag here which is called header layout where you specify a layout file that will contain or display the contents of the header view let's take a look at this file which would be drawer underscore header dot xml here is what i have made you can make anything you want you can add whatever layout you want inside this depending on your choice i have taken a frame layout where i have set an alpha of 0.8 to give it kind of a nice effect and then there's a text view which is pinned to the bottom of this frame layout as per the layout gravity attribute here with the right side text that says right and a padding of 16 dp with a style of title that simply says hello webs let me also show you the image that we have 
inside the drawable folder i have just added one single image called image underscore drawer underscore header dot jpg now jpg is a bad choice i know that but in this case i wasn't able to find a nice image that suits with our team over here this image is 769 by 539 jpg file now here is what you do there are two strategies for you guys to add images one is you can add four different versions of an image with four different drawable folders now this is a bad idea because these images are going to be big they are going to be like 800 by 400 600 by 300 kind of stuff so you don't want to replicate your images too many times the better idea is to have a single large image and use a library like picasso or universal image loader to load that image at the appropriate width and height inside your drawer as per the device that you're currently running on and that is the approach which i would recommend but here in this video i won't be able to cover that because i need to jump into picasso and universal image loader for doing that so going back i'm gonna just gonna use the simple image that you see right now and if you run the app let's find out what happens so there's the app running if you open the drawer this is what you see we have this nice effect given by the image at the top where i have my title being displayed at the bottom and then followed by the menu items adding icons is also pretty simple and straightforward you can use photoshop to make a psd and then export it or illustrator and then export it or the best idea that i do is to go to google and go to this site where you can generate icons for material design here i will simply pick this option that says image and select that once done, I will pick up some image of some size on my system and I'm going to upload that image. This is a 256 by 256 image that I'm currently using in one of my iOS apps. So I'm just going to click open here. And once done, it's going to resize that image with appropriate settings needed for material design as per the guidelines. And it's going to let me download the zip file. When I download the zip, you can see it's complete here at the bottom left. All we have to do is go back to Android Studio and create the appropriate directories. Now, first, Remember that to create directories here, go to the project view from the Android view. Currently, this would be your Android view and you won't see any directories here. If you don't, go to the project view and here right click on Arius, say new, Android resource directory, make it of the type drawable over here, like there. And then once you select the drawable, make sure you select the density here and select the appropriate settings for that density that you care about once done the folder will be created all you have to do is drag and drop the images inside that folder so let me add all the images and show you how that is going to look like so going to the menu underscore drawer i can set the icon just like any other menu icon by saying at the rate drawable slash ic underscore number one and i can repeat the process for adding all the other icons right here so once you start running the app, you open the drawer and bam, take a look at that. All the icons, just the way we want them, along with the header right here, which is our navigation view. Now this video has gone more than 10 minutes and therefore I would have to stop here. But in the next video, I'm going to cover how to make groups in this and how to make these item clicks work. In other words, right now when you click on this, nothing happens, but we are going to make something happen in the next video. I'm feel free to go to Google and type Slider on Udemy to get access to our how to make app series and then check us out on Slider Twitter and Slider Facebook and all the code for this video and the rest of the videos is out there if you type Slider GitHub on Google. Stay tuned.